Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of Let's Play Card Hunter. After the introduction of the game in the previous video, I've decided that I will go for full Let's Play. So I will show you uh, the whole single player campaign. But before I will go for the first adventure for today, uh, the Wizards Workshop here, which is probably the first adventure you should go after in the campaign, I wanted to mention one thing I have discovered. Uh, a few hours ago I have finished the campaign for the first time and after I finished the last dungeon under each dungeon these tiny medals have appeared so I wanted to check what those are and when we go to the uh, introduction screen of uh, the wizard's workshop we will see uh, what those means when you play the campaign for the first time, the only option you have for each dungeon is this regular adventure. This is just to go through the dungeon and when you finish it you unlock some uh, more dungeons and you just progress through the campaign. But when you finish the campaign, to add some more challenge to the game, developers have decided to add quests to uh, each adventure. And these quests are uh, adding a lot of fun to the game and a lot more challenge to the game. Uh, until I've discovered this, I thought that some uh, of these adventures were quite challenging. But after I've discovered this, I've realized that, uh, you know, just the first playthrough is uh, uh, some way how to prepare you for the real game. And the really fun, a real fun starts with these quests. Because uh, this allows you to go through the game again and but this time with some disadvantages or special requirements for example for this first uh, uh, adventure there are four options where to go I would say this is something like um, maybe achievements uh, compared to some other games and those options we have here for quests are go through the adventure without uh, a single member of your party dying. It's not that hard this, uh, this early uh, in the campaign or, or for this initial adventures but later in some uh, dungeons it can be quite challenging. Another thing use only wizards again it wasn't that hard for this dungeon but uh, uh, for some uh, higher level dungeons losing some flexibility because you are able to use only one class can add definitely a lot uh, of challenge. Another one I didn't finish yet is to go through the adventure with a party uh, where each member has only one hit point and that's uh, when the things start to be quite interesting because every dungeon has this option and when I imagine some later dungeons full of casters and trench units Jesus this is crazy this is probably the hardest option from all these quests and it definitely is uh, uh, super challenging in some dungeons and it will, will be a lot of fun uh, trying to do this and the last thing equip only items with drawback card drawback card are black cards attached to some items, uh, mostly items which are uh, quite strong for their item level. So to compensate for their st strong cards, they have some drawback cards attached to them as well. I didn't do this yet because I probably don't have enough drawback cards to equip my a uh, whole party only with drawback cards or items with drawback cards but as I get more items I will definitely go for this and it shouldn't be that hard you know it will be challenging but uh, the biggest challenge of all for these uh, quests will be this uh, third option party has one health this is just crazy I was thinking about uh, making some videos about these quests but um, you can finish each of these quests only once. I've already finished one, uh, finished some. Maybe I will leave this uh, one health challenge and make some guides for this. Uh, or it's probably better to say I will record some attempts because I'm definitely not um, skilled enough in this game to make guides. But it could be fun to uh, watch me failing in this uh, one health challenge. Uh, 
But uh, for now, for the regular Let's, let's Play, I will just go for the normal adventure and as I said maybe I will do another playlist with these failed attempts with one health challenges. But for this video let's, uh, let's go for the regular adventure. Uh, and one thing I should mention about these quests I've forgotten that. The interesting part about this thing is uh, you, are, you have guaranteed rare, rare item after you finish the quest. So thanks to this uh, uh, these quests you can gear your characters much faster and I've uh, so far finished like six of these uh, quests but uh, I have already a ton of rare items three epic items, one legendary item. So this is a really good way how to gear uh, your characters for uh, multiplayer. And uh, uh, thanks to this uh, uh, guaranteed, uh, at least rare item, uh, you are really, let's say, like motivated to do these things, and uh, it makes it uh, a lot more interesting. But enough talking about quests. Maybe we'll get to them later. And now let's go to the regular adventure. So let's check that and go for the wizard's workshop. The Hedge Wizard, Aloiso, has asked you to help. It seems his recent mechanical creations have gone hay haywire, attacking anyone who steps foot inside his tower. He offers to reward you if you will rid his home of the out-of-control golems and ornithopters. Will you climb the forbidding stairs to the wizard's workshop? Of course we will. Uh, just uh, to have a look at this, uh, it's recommended for uh, characters between level 2 and 3 and this adventure consists of 4 fights so it will take a bit longer than the, f the fight in uh, the introduction part. So let's begin the adventure and uh, let's read a bit about the first battle. Aloysius Tower is neat and well furnished. The wizard is an enthusiastic horticulturalist and he has placed magnificent ficus trees in the corners of this room. As you step inside the tower, two tin golems wear into life and lurch towards you with murderous intent. Battle. Okay, now we are on the battle map, we can see his room with this ficus trees and our party is uh, the entrance. So let's start and I would say as usual I will create some kind of defensive line with my characters. So uh, our warrior definitely should move forward. Now it's turn for uh, these golems and uh, the second thing I will move our priest forward because these guys can handle a few hits uh, our wizard should be back so now I will quickly check our cards what we have a lunging hack so we can move and attack block we didn't see these cards in the previous video so I will uh, open them to show you how they work Block any means they can be used against any type of card, melee attack, range attack, spells, debuffs, anything. To succeed with the, the block we have to roll 4 plus. So uh, I, I would say quite clear. Parry another type of block card, block melee, so this can be used only against melee attacks. And if we are successful we can draw a card. And to be successful we have to roll 2 plus. So that's uh, another card for our priest. Two attacks uh, for four damage in with range of one. Uh, one heal uh, with the strength of two. And our wizard has still movement card. This little zap with range of two and attack of three. A force blast. Uh, with a strength of 2, a range of 5 and a slide back effect so when the target is hit with this spell it will be moved back uh, by 2 tiles and the last thing is combined card, reflexive teleport this card can be either used as its blue part as a movement card to move uh, up to 2 tiles or can be used as a trait trait is another type of card uh, those are orange 
when you draw a trade, you have to use it uh, if it's a, only a pure trade. Uh, but uh, because this card is combined, it works a bit differently. So we can just keep it in hand. And any time when we are targeted by an attack from the front, we uh, will have a success roll. And if we succeed, this card will allow us to move back. And like that, we can avoid uh, that attack. So interesting card. You can see the color around its name. It's golden, which means this is a rare card. Uh, cards like this add a lot of uh, options for uh, for the part and are definitely interesting but sometimes um, it takes some testing to figure out uh, how they work if they are good or not I'm still testing this card well it's interesting and if you you know uh, don't want to use it as uh, this uh, uh, orange part you can always just use it as a move so uh, it's decent but enough talking about cards and let's just focus on, on the battle. Now what we can do, uh, I would say we can start casting and I don't want both of those golems to come at the same time. So I will use the first blast on the first one. And they have some armor, they succeeded so he didn't take any damage but at least uh, he was pushed back. And now they are coming and I think... Uh, first, I will use the spell. This time he didn't succeed, so he takes full damage. And now I will uh, do the lunging hack with the warrior. Uh, and I'm thinking I should probably move to the side and attack. Again, didn't succeed with the armor, so we are able to do some damage. And for now, this is all we can do. Healer is out of range. I don't want to move with the wizard. And these are defensive cards for the next turn. So let's pass. Because our priest has three cards, I have to discard one of them. And for now, I will get rid of the minor heal. I would like to keep uh, the offensive cards in my hand. Okay, so next turn, because... Uh, uh, the opponent was the first one who passed. Uh, he goes first in the new round. But now it's our turn and with our new cards. Uh, first thing, I will probably close the gap in our defense. And now let's start attacking. I will try to kill this golem with the violent swing. This uh, is a really hard hitting attack, but it has uh, a disadvantage. Because when you play this, you have to discard your oldest card. And if you don't have any other card than the Violent Swing, you can't use it. The oldest card is always the one that is the last in your hand. So like this, uh, I will lose one bludgeon. But uh, to be honest, I don't care about losing one card if uh, this will allow me to kill the golem. It's all about uh, if he is successful with his armor roll. So... Uh, I'm not a heal. So let's try the Violent Swing and attack. And he wasn't successful with the defensive roll, so first golem is down. Now he's attacking. But if you check his card in his hand, you can see on top of the screen, uh, he only has armor left, so I will heal a bit of the damage. And now I can use all my offensive cards on him. First, the last card from... Uh, the priest and uh, now let's go to the warrior close the line from this side and use his two attacks this time the armor was su successful so the damage was lowered by two now bludgeon and with full damage um, now let's check this card this is uh, Terrain Attachment spell. You place it on one tile uh, of your choice in the range of the spell. And if there is an opponent standing on the tile at the end of the turn, it something happens. In this case, the uh, 
figure standing on the stile will take six, six points of damage at the end of turn and the terrain attachment stays on the ground for two turns. So let's use that, place it under the golem and uh, end the turn. If Even if he is successful with his armor roll he will die anyway because uh, it deals six damage, he has only four hit points and that armor can prevent only two damage. So let's pass discard two cards from our wizard and now that uh, golem will die okay so let's move on first part of the adventure is over the once elegant room is now ruined the golems have been reduced to piles of scrap metal amongst the debris of fine decor you will leave the piles of scrap metal for aloiso to clean up and climb to the second tower level so let's get some loot from this Open chest, uh, nothing that interesting, uh, maybe I will be using some of these items in those uh, quests later, but for now we have uh, better items for our characters. Uh, by the way, this club reward, this means when you uh, pay some money for the game, you will get an extra item and that item is shown here. But I didn't pay anything for the game so far. Maybe I will do it because I really like the game and I want I want open all options for it. But uh, for now we just have to work without these bonuses. So let's take our t two items and move on. The second battle. This level of the wizard's tower houses the old man's library. There is a single golem here but this time constructed from gleaming bronze. Furthermore, it is considerably larger and more threatening than those in the previous room. It doesn't look pleased to see you. Okay, so let's check this guy. So... He's on the other side of the room and it will take some time for him to come. I would say we should use this time to uh, do some damage. So let's start with uh, our wizard, this deadly spark. This is probably uh, our strongest spell at the moment. Range of 6, doing 5 damage and it's hard to block. So uh, when uh, or if the target has some block cards, um, their uh, success roll is increased by two so it's uh, significantly harder to avoid damage from these cards but hard to block does not affect rolls for armor only for block cards so let's try it and he has an armor and he has two armor cards uh, one of those were successful and that's a stronger armor with strength of four so he was able to avoid four damage from uh, the spell that really didn't work uh, that well. But what can we do? Let's just uh, keep going. And now I'm thinking if I should move forward and start attacking him or wait for him to come. I would say he has only two cards we don't know about yet. That's maximum of two attacks. So let's uh, move in and try to do as much damage as possible. One attack card for four damage, it's not that bad. And I will open with the violence, violence wing again and I will hope that uh, he won't be successful with his armor. Uh, of course he is, but with only one, so six more damage and another attack for four damage. So let's heal a bit and we are already on only five hit points. So I will have to be careful with our priest. But uh, our warriors there didn't do a thing, so let's uh, move closer and use all three attacks. Doesn't matter uh, which order we will go, it's just about the armor, how successful he will be. Okay, so far we are lucky and he has only 5 hit points left, so if uh, that happens again we should be able to kill him this turn, uh, but this time he's successful and only uh, 2 damage and the last thing our wizard still has his little zap so let's try that 
there's still a tiny chance that uh, this spell could end the battle. No, it didn't happen. And one armor was enough to stop it. So, let's pass, end the turn and uh, hope that uh, we will be able to finish next round. What do we have? Um, this attack looks promising, so let's start with that. Okay, so far so good, still works. And that uh, was all we needed. And we have won and, and move forward with this adventure. So let's go for this screen and uh, the result. With the huge golem shattered, you are able to search the library. It contains a variety of arcane construction manuals and a few recipe books. As you pursue the books, you are distracted by a loud persistent buzzing sound emanating from the room above. More infernal machines, what mechanical monstrosities await? Let's uh, find it out, but first uh, I would like to get some loot, so let's try our luck. And an uncommon item, the weapon, uh, nothing interesting. And this is uh, a treasure item. Treasure items don't have any cards attached to them. They are just uh, here to, uh, for us to sell them in shops to get some gold. And uh, the better uh, rarity they have, the more gold we can get for them. So for uh, uncommon item we can get, uh, my guess is like 10 gold. Nothing awesome, but the usual selling price of items is around 2 gold. So at least something. Uh, the the best way or the easiest way how to get some decent amount of gold is selling high rarity items especially epic items and legendary items i have found one legendary uh, treasure so far and i've sold it for 1000 gold so you know if you are starting with the campaign every bit of gold helps but later uh, this is not that interesting, but under it's understandable this early in the uh, in the campaign you are not getting something uh, super crazy expensive uh, to so the game uh, stays interesting and challenging uh, for some time. So let's take our treasure and go for the third battle. The third floor of Aloysius Tower is a kitchen. Two more tin golems defend the, this area. They are accompanied by a pair of ornithopters. You, uh, you shudder at the madness of it. Living machines. What was Aloysio doing? Oh, He was trying to tinker with things he didn't understand completely. And now we have to clean the mess. So let's check this out. Two golems and two ornithopters. Um, our wizard doesn't have any spells uh, with... Uh, uh, range long enough so we'll have to start with something else and I would say I will start with movement and place my warrior in front of the wizard at least a bit and now we can start attacking those ornithopters so let's do it and I will probably start with spells Okay, uh, and I, I think uh, it's better to finish uh, finish those ornithopters. They are in group of two, and um, if you can read the, the description of their group on top of the screen, you can see that they uh, draw two cards each turn. If you kill one of them, the amount of cards they can draw per turn will decrease. So. If we kill one Ornithopter in this turn, uh, the group will uh, be weakened, and sometimes it's quite important to, uh, you know, just focus your fire to weaken your opponents as fast as possible. So that's what I'm going after now. Uh, I will use another spell, and now we will take probably quite a lot of damage from those golems, but uh, we can do nothing against that. Uh, now let's finish that Ornithopter with this one attack, it should be enough. Okay, so that's the first one. And it seems like they don't have any cards they could use, so we can keep going. Now the Golem is in range, so I will try to do some damage to him. 
but he has armor as expected but only one so the chance to do some damage is quite decent that was the first attack now i will try this but i don't want to move so i will just stay where i am and try to attack and again we are successful so he has only uh, eight hit points left but the last attack we have are stone spikes, the terrain attachment, so let's place it under him and hope that it will do some damage as well. And the last thing will be heal up a bit of the damage we've received this turn. Okay, and that's all we can do this turn, so let's pass. And this was the armor check for uh, the terrain attachment. He succeeded, so it was lowered uh, by 2. But still, quite a lot of damage. And uh, now we have another uh, trained bludgeon, so let's try to kill him. If he still has only one armor, uh, we'll be able to do it. Okay, no success, and he's dead. Okay, that worked perfectly. This was a spell from uh, that Ornithopter, uh, a cone spell which does one damage and leaves a dot uh, effect for I think two turns. So for two turns now we will take one damage every turn. But this, this is not a problem. Uh, we can survive that. Bigger problem is the damage from golems. Uh, that uh, Ornithopter is in range so let's just keep attacking with our warrior. And I will leave uh, that golem as the last one because uh, he's tougher uh, than uh, than the ornithopter. Our priest can't do anything, so let's just keep going with our wizard. First the spark, okay, two more damage, and uh, now this uh, bungled bolt. It does 3 damage, but when you cast it, you also take 1 damage. It's not a problem for the normal uh, playthrough, but uh, for those challenges, for the challenge with uh, only 1 hit point, this spell is quite deadly, and once I didn't realize it, and I've killed myself with my own spell. So, for those challenges, uh, now I know that uh, I really should avoid items with these bolts. But now we can use it, it's no problem. One point of damage, uh, we can easily heal and survive. Now we have one minor heal and we will probably need it for our priest. He's closer uh, or closest to the golem. And the last thing, I will use this healing presence. It's, uh, let's say, an enchantment you place on a character. And uh, at the end of each turn, all characters around the enchanted one are healed for two. You can't use it on your priest or you can't use it on the caster. Uh, but uh, we have a wizard in the middle of uh, our group so he's the ideal target. Okay, and uh, the rest is only movement cards so let's just pass and wait for uh, more cards. Now the Holy Presence, so our uh, Priest and Warrior were healed and uh, another turn we can finish the Gargoyle. Now some damage again, but we can heal it. Uh, start with Violent Swing. This. Uh, card is really overpowered for this uh, low levels and surprisingly I um, had it uh, very early in the first playthrough so uh, either I was lucky or uh, it's just uh, you know uh, not that rare and uh, you can find it quite early. Uh, how much hit points does he have left? Let's check that. 7. Uh, if we are lucky, we may be able to finish uh, the fight. So let's try it. Deadly Spark. Ah, uh, doesn't work. And even no damage. And now this uh, Bungled Bolt. Okay, this time it worked. But we don't have enough damage to kill him yet. Maybe I will just move the Warrior forward. 
and do a bit more damage. We have those cards, so we may as well use them. Yeah, I expected that he will succeed with one of those defensive rolls. But he's almost down in this turn, we should finish the fight. Again, the healing presence, so more hit points. And what should I start with? Let's say the Deadly Spark. Doesn't really matter now, it's just about a bit of luck. Uh, and I would say this is some kind of bug because he's, uh, the uh, that Spark does 5 damage. He succeeded with one armor roll and it still killed him with 3 hit points. There was something weird about this. But yeah, let's just move on. We would uh, kill the golem anyway. I've never seen this uh, weird calculation before. Maybe I didn't notice something. Uh, the fight destroys the kitchen and much of its contents. You hope that uh, all this is worth it to the errant wizard. You can now climb to the last level of the tower and secure it from its artificially animated silence. Okay, so we'll do that, but uh, first I want the loot. So let's check it. We've seen this and uh, untrained sparkling. Uh, nothing that interesting. This spark conductor is the trait I was talking uh, about before. So when you use it, you attach it to yourself. It lasts for two turns. And uh, uh, when it's active, uh, you add one damage to any electrical attack and subtract two from block rolls versus arcane attacks you play. So it's some kind of uh, boost for uh, for your characters for its duration. And this uh, we will miss, but no problem. So let's take the loot and move to the last adventure. At the tower's apex is Aloysius Master's Laboratory. The walls are lined with shelves of herbs, uh, unguents, I don't know what that is, and potions. This room is guarded by two ornithopters and a further bronze golem. These mechanical monstrosities represent a threat to magic. Living creatures and the Cardhantrian way of life. They must be smashed to pieces. Yeah, let's do that. Let's fight. Okay, so this is his final level. And two Ornithopters and this uh, big golem. What do we have? I will probably start with those Ornithopters first because they should be easier to kill. So first some spells for let's say this one. And uh, second spell. Okay. Now that the Ornithopter is casting and it was this was well played, all my characters were in range. But um, it shouldn't do that much damage, you know, we should be able to, uh, to heal this, especially with the healing presence, we should be able to handle the damage over time quite easily. Now I want to move my wizard uh, back to safety and because the priest has some attacks I will move him forward and use that attack and the golem is in range that could be a problem uh, by the way here because our warrior was not standing uh, like facing the golem he wasn't able to use his block so uh, now it starts to be important uh, which direction our characters are facing because if you are not uh, positioned properly, you can't use bl uh, block cards. So now, because of that, we've taken some uh, some extra damage. Uh, so let's heal that. Uh, I will use the healing presence on the wizard. And uh, heal him, because he will be the only one not affected by that healing presence. And uh, I think and the turn we can't do anything else. We have to discard some cards uh, from our warrior, but it was only movement, so no problem. First damage over time, now healing uh, over time, and another spell. This time we are successful with our block, but I would rather uh, have that block for the golem. 
Uh, what can we do now? We can either finish the uh, Ornithopter with our Priest, but I would rather use the Violent Swing on the Golem. So, I will leave the Ornithopter for now, maybe finish it with, uh, with the Wizard and uh, move the Priest. Okay, now they are in range, so what can we do now? Maybe first I will try to uh, push the golem away to get some time. I really don't care much about the damage from this, I just want to move him back. But it seems that uh, we were in wrong positioning and this pillar here uh, prevented us from moving him. I was uh, thinking that he will be moved between them, but seems like I was wrong. And now he's taken some damage. Hmm. Now what can we do? I'm thinking if I should use the Violent Swing on the Golem, but because of that I will lose the Minor Heal. Or if I just uh, should keep this for for this turn, use the minor heal and leave it for leave the violent swing for the next turn, and it's probably better. I will heal the warrior and use uh, and um, wait with that attack. And all I will do now is to kill the gargoyle and do as much damage as possible to the second one. Yeah, that's probably better plan. Okay, move a bit with this and do more damage. And this is all we can do for this turn, so let's just pass. Mm. And now... Hmm... I would say I will first finish uh, finish the Ornithopter. Okay, and now it's just about how much damage that uh, Golem can do. We are still alive, and now it's time to try to do some damage. First the Violent Swing, and he was not successful, but he has three armors. Oh, four armors? Really? Okay, I would say there is no uh, reason for attacking him f uh, further. I will just move back into the defensive line and pass the turn. There is like no way how to uh, do some damage through four armors. Uh, just discard movement cards and wait for the next turn because in the next turn he will have to, to discard two cards. So that will make the fight a bit easier. Again, some healing. We really needed that. And let's try it again. How many armors does he have now? First one uh, is fine, second succeeded. But he has only two armors, so that was a bit better. Now, I will heal the warrior before anything else. And looks like he doesn't have any attacks left, so let's try to do as much damage as possible. Okay, not with this attack. So let's try again. Okay, and it worked. Last 10 hit points. Now, trained bludgeon. And this was really nice, 6 damage. So, the chance of finishing the fight this turn increased really significantly. And two more spells. Every bit of damage helps. And last two hit points. And I hope we'll be able to finish him with the uh, with these spikes. Also, let's check what's gonna happen. Okay, and this should be enough. Even when he succeeds, the damage will be high enough. And that's the end of the last fight of this adventure. Adventure complete. But I wouldn't wouldn't say we still have uh, two screens to go. The final battle destroys the laboratory completely. Both Aloiso, the, uh, the wizard, and the local authorities are grateful for the player's uh, successful effort.
With a sigh, Alonzo swears a solemn oath never to dabble in the dark arts of technology again. He rewards you with what he can salvage from his ruined lab and pledges to assist you in your future adventures uh, whenever he can. So this means we didn't see Aloizo uh, for the last time here and he will appear again later in the campaign. So, but that will be in the future. For now let's collect loot and get some experiences. Almost enough for another level. And now get our loot because this was the last battle we get a bit more items and this looks like really interesting loot so let's check that this divine item hmm oh, well, well nothing that interesting uh, this again nothing super awesome but this is starting to be more interesting for a fire wizard this is uh, quite interesting arcane item definitely for some AOE damage this is interesting and uh, in some challenges or those quests uh, this can be useful and what's the last thing Gnomish Cologne as an epic treasure and this means uh, I'll be able to get uh, quite decent amount of money so very nice loot of course I want to take all and finish and now we are back in the world map and this will be all for this video I hope you liked it I know this part was uh, a bit longer I was explaining some things still uh, but I would say now it's quite clear uh, how the game works and how all those cards work and uh, there is not that many new uh, mechanics left to explain so further parts will be uh, a bit shorter and all battles will be faster without all these explanations uh, but still I hope you like this part uh, for the first adventure well it wasn't that tough but uh, you know we have to start somewhere and I really don't want to skip any of these uh, adventures um, we'll see another adventure in the next part and until then have a good time see you